Welcome, my name is Hazard, and today you're gonna to go for a flight in this T6. I'm here at Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. I wanna thank the 19th Air Force and its commander, Major General Craig Wills, for inviting me and my team out here. I was able to catch up with one of the best instructors I know, Major John Leach, who goes by Link. He's been instructing students for the last seven years. He offered to give us a walk around of the T6 Texan II, which is a primary trainer that all Air Force pilots learn how to fly on. He was then able to give us some in cockpit footage during one of his sorties. Terminate. I'm Major John Leach. I'm an instructor here at Debt 24 teaching on the T6. So the mission of the T6 is to learn how to fly. Uh, you'll get students that have no flight hours. You'll get students that uh, already have their, their private pilot's license or, or maybe even have been flying for the airline. But at some point, uh, military aviation uh, diverts or, or um, starts to, to become something that civilian aviation is not. And in that, you do a lot of formation training. A lot of students that come through here don't have a lot of formation experience. So even if they can control the airplane, if they can fly great, when you put another airplane next to them uh, as an IP, you've got to be uh, pretty pretty on your game. First things first, uh, we'd already briefed up. Um, we have a, a pretty good set of objectives for the student to focus on today, depending on how the last ride went. We get our tail number at the desk. We walk out here, and today we got tail 676. Uh, for uh, myself and the student to fly. So we walk out here, uh, we'll either both go through uh, the walk around and the forms together, or I'll expect the student to be able to handle uh, much of the pilot stuff in the T6 here. So first things first, what we do is we kind of look to make sure that everything looks the way that it's supposed to. Is there any foreign objects that are floating around? Are there any big switches such as the uh, ignition switch or things like that um, on and maybe they shouldn't be? Uh, and then after that, we'll start kind of testing some systems. So the first thing we look at is to make sure it's called the PCL, but that's the throttle forward, all the way forward and back. We'll go through and make sure the switches are all where they're supposed to be. Uh, spoiler alert, everything's supposed to be off. Check the emergency systems, uh, such as the, the fire tests, uh, and then from there we'll look at the injection seat. So make sure that the ejection seat is free, free and clear of any sort of foreign objects, uh, and then especially making sure that um, this uh, deck cord is in good condition. That'll actually explode and fracture the canopy so that these seats can um, egress out of the airplane. All right, so after we're done with the over the rail, it's called, we'll do a quick walk around and make sure that the airplane is ready to go. We'll make sure that the underside, the tire, uh, and the brake indicators and the, the gear doors are all where they're supposed to be. So when we come through here on this wing, we wanna make sure that these are free and correct and there's nothing binding. We wanna make sure that uh, the static wicks, they're called, is to uh, dispel some of that static electricity into the air. Right here, we have the AOA uh, indexer. And so what that's doing is it's measuring the airflow over the wing and getting us a good idea of if we're close to stalling or if we're in good flyable condition there. So in the civilian world, what you have, and if you fly Cessnas, you're familiar, it's a little tab that's kind of over an opening, right? And so you would either uh, open or push that tab up and you'll hear a horn. So inside the airplane, we have a gauge of how much this is moving. Now, if this is too much of an A-way or we're getting to stall, then we have what's called a stick shaker. It's not a, a horn. It'll shake the stick uh, and then it'll tell you that, hey, we're, we're approaching um, a critical angle of attack there. Normally, the, the final turn is 115, so 115 knots for us, uh, and then about 105 on final. The primary way of refueling the T6 is actually not by this. It's by this over here. So if you're gonna go to an out base and you're gonna get gas, they'd bring a fuel truck over here. They would take this cap off and go ahead and fuel it up. We've got about 1,100 pounds of gas that's in the T6, three um, gas tanks all together. And if you want to get 100 more pounds, we'd actually use the fuel cap over there. It's called over the wing refueling. So that gives us uh, quite a bit of time aloft as we're looking at a fuel flow between 300 and maybe 400 pounds. Normally when you're uh, cross country and you're flying the T6, uh, you're looking at somewhere between 200 to, to maybe 300 miles, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. That's the normal range that you would go. All right, so as you can see, this is the PT6 engine. Uh, the prop uh, is actually not a normal prop, as you would imagine from a um, Cessna 172 uh, or a general aviation flying that, that you might be familiar with. It's actually driven by a jet engine. So uh, the fuel or the, uh, the air will come in through the front, uh, it'll actually, it's called a reverse flow engine, which means 
you get air from the front and the airflow actually comes this way. So that's why the exhaust is in the front of the engine. Uh, the propeller spins about 2,000 RPM. Uh, it's about 1,100 horsepower. And uh, at sea level, you get about 2,700 to 2,800 uh, pounds of thrust uh, out of this thing. So this is a constant speed prop, uh, which means that it spins uh, at 2,000 RPM. We have a, um, a gauge in here that, that will tell us how fast this prop is uh, spinning. But inside, internal to the engine, they've got metering equipment that keep that prop spinning at basically max power the whole time. This propeller will actually change its pitch depending on how much you are commanding as far as power to the engine. Now, this engine has uh, 18 and a half quarts of oil. It pulls the engine, lubricates, but it also changes the pitch of this prop as well. So we talked about how the prop is metered by the PCL in uh, the cockpit. Um, depending on where you put that PCL, the engine will go ahead and meter oil pressure to the prop and change this pitch. So we'll walk through here, here's the intake, like I said. Uh, looking to make sure that that's free and correct. A lot of times, if we are coming out here for the first flight of the day or cross country at a, an airport, we'll have a big plug to make sure that there's no objects, foreign debris that gets in there and uh, nothing's at risk of being uh, sucked up into the engine. Look at the general condition of the spinner, look at the general condition uh, of the exhaust stack as well. And then it's pretty much going to be the same thing on this side. One thing that we have on this side that we don't have on the other side is going to be your hydraulic uh, indicator. We only have one system that's rated to about 3000 plus or minus 120 uh, PSI. And what that's going to be in charge of is the actuation or the movements of the flaps, the landing gear and the nose wheel steering, things like that. And then we've got the uh, static ports here. Uh, static ports, again, just like you're familiar with on the GA aircraft or general aviation, they're gonna measure the uh, ambient air pressure and that's where you're gonna get things like VSI and your altitude. Mm -hmm. All of these uh, flight controls are uh, actuated by um, pulleys uh, and cables. There's no hydraulic um, activation of the flight control, so if I were to move the tail up, in this case, you would see the stick in the uh, cockpit start to move as well. There's really no um, augmentation as far as the flight controls go, so you can feel that there is definitely um, some, some pressure in the stick. And then when you are slow, you're gonna feel that you've got that sluggish feeling, and that gives you an idea of your overall energy state without having to look at, like I said, the AOA uh, indexer, right, um, or uh, your, your airspeed. You kind of just know what flight condition you're in. So trim tabs are electrically actuated uh, from the uh, front cockpit. Um, this is gonna be your elevator trim tab and then your rudder uh, trim as well. Uh, and that's on the hat switch, it's all electric, which is nice uh, because unlike your Cessna 172, you don't have the wheel that you have to keep spinning. We're about 200 knots uh, around here. Um, if, we're, if we're feeling like we're gonna push it up, 230, 250, obviously below 10. Um, the max speed is going to be 316 knots. My favorite part about being an instructor is remembering when I was a student and watching the light bulb come on for other students. Uh, it's always great when that happens because flying is so dynamic and there's so many variables that when a student learns to control them and you're seeing steps towards being a military aviator, uh, the feeling that you get is, is pretty awesome. Uh, and, it, and it kind of tells you that you're doing the, the job at least a little right uh, when, when they start figuring things out. The hardest part about flying this airplane is teaching a student what they did wrong and how to fix it while trying to fend for your life uh, and make sure that not just you, but if you're in a formation, the other airplane is safe as well. Um, so trying to, to think about what the student might be thinking about and getting ahead of them uh, before uh, you, you get into a kind of a jam in T6. The closest I've ever come to uh, being afraid for my life is when a student, is a pretty solid student, was learning how to fly a formation for the first time, lost sight of an airplane momentarily as the other airplane started to maneuver in, in an unpredictable fashion. I look over to, to see that other airplane Traffic. Traffic. and he actually just moved out of my uh, frame of view. Uh, and then I, I, I had a, a shadow that was cast over my airplane 
uh, while we're flying. That was indicating to me that there are two airplanes very close to each other that don't know where each other are. So uh, we took evasive action pretty quickly, uh, but the, we, we came back, called it quits, debriefed it, and hopefully that doesn't happen again, but that was, that was pretty harrowing. I became a T6 instructor in 2015, and I've been a T6 instructor ever since. Uh, love it, I think it's been the most gratifying job. Uh, I always say that I work uh, as hard as I can, but I don't go to work. I've never gone to, to work a day in my life. Uh, this has definitely been um, the, the greatest job that I've had, and uh, it's, it's been the majority of, of my career, so I'm pretty lucky. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now it's your turn. If you have something interesting that you personally have access to, that's the key. Email me and we'll see what we can do. You can find my email in the description. In the meantime, here's a link to the next generation trainer, the T6 Plus.